evening and welcome to World Changers Bible Study. It's great to be with you another Wednesday evening as we look at God's Word together. And I'm excited to welcome you to our session in this series, Breaking Strongholds. In our last session, we looked at breaking the stronghold of fear. Today, we want to look at breaking the stronghold of discouragement. I just trust that you stay with us over the next half hour as we look at God's Word together. Um, this Bible study is brought to you compliments of the Churches of God in the Garden in St. James and Silver Sands in Christ Church. And we are always excited to come and to get together with you as we sit around the Word of God, as we study together and as we apply God's Word to our lives. And so um, thank you for joining us this evening. Feel free to um, like, subscribe to our YouTube page, and please check out what we've been doing in ministry over the last number of months. And I just want to highlight the verse that we have been using, well, the text that we have been using as our key text for this series, Breaking Strongholds, and it comes from the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, which says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I pray that God brings light to you even as we study his word together. Now, now this text has, um, like we were saying in our last session, a military flair about it because the word stronghold comes from that place of warfare, battle, where, where persons would um, be shut up in a stronghold built somewhere on a hill that made enemies, um, shut enemies out and stop them from being able to penetrate um, and defeat you. And, and we are seeing that what, what the word does is that it flips that idea of a stronghold from being something that was positive and necessary to keep enemies out and, and uses it in, in this text to refer to a place where the enemy of our souls is able to keep an unbeliever captive to shadow everything else and to surround that unbeliever and stop that unbeliever from coming to a place of the knowledge of God. And it also is used as a place where um, a believer can become incapacitated. And, and so we are not warring against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. That's what the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6. But, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, we, we are under attack. We are in a battle and we have weapons. The weapons we have, however, are not carnal weapons. They are not of the earth, but they are mighty weapons of the Lord um, for pulling down strongholds, for casting down arguments, for dealing with those things that affect us mentally, that stop us from getting to know God in the way um, that we ought to know him. One of those things is discouragement. Discouragement gets in the way of people to stop them from getting to know God well, stopping them from being free, uh, being liberated in this life. And, and so we, we are saying that a stronghold is a point of operation. It's a place where the enemy operates from. Um, and where he keeps the unbeliever captive or he keeps the believer incapacitated. It's, it's like something that surrounds you, limits you, affects your progress, gets in your way. And, and as a keynote, we were saying that anything that is opposed to the will of God in your life, but has a stronghold on you, doesn't matter what it is. If it's opposed to God's will for your life, but somehow it has a strong hold on you. We are saying that is what we will term in this series a stronghold. So let's talk a little bit today about discouragement. Now, now we have different kinds of days, don't we? 
we have those what we call mountaintop days when when everything's going well the world looks bright everything seems somehow to be falling into place um all the bills are paid we 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 we're, we're able to save some money the doctor has given us a clean bill of health we are at ease we are at peace there's this feeling of exhilaration things are going well for us those are what we call mountaintop days when things are going really, really well. Then we have ordinary days. The days when we work as usual, we, we deal with our various tasks. Um, we, are, we are neither elated nor depressed. We go through the mundane things of life, our routines, our everyday activities. We look forward to weekends and bike holidays. We are efficient at work. We do what we have to do. We get through the day. Ordinary days, um, days when, you know, we are efficient, but we are not necessarily excited. But then there are those days that are difficult days or dark days. Um, days when we trudge heavily through disappointment and discouragement, um, when despair and doubts and confusion sometimes begin to set in. I'm not sure um, how many of you have had dark and difficult days in your life. But if you haven't, it means that you couldn't be living for a long time. These are those days when we feel emotionally low, when things go wrong, or when a series of things begin to go wrong. And, and you're living on the edge where you are just waiting for something else to go wrong, and it burdens you, it weighs your spirit down. Now, now, you and I have little problem dealing with mountaintop days. The, the only complaint we have about mountaintop days is that we don't have enough of them sometimes going around. And ordinary days, while they present us with a little bit more of a challenge, um, we, we, we deal with them. We know how to deal with them. And sometimes we can turn an ordinary day into an exhilarating day. Um, because the ordinary days are the things that we encounter regularly. But in those dark days, um, those days that get us down, those days when things don't go well, when it seems as though we are losing our grip and we are losing our confidence and we are losing our security and we are losing our hope and our outlook on life seems very negative. Those are what we call days of discouragement, when our spirits are weighed down. Now, you can go through a tough time and not be discouraged. You can go through difficult days and not be discouraged. But discouragement comes over us like a cloud. It surrounds us like a mist to weigh our spirits down. And, and the challenge is that, you know, everybody can have a little bit of discouragement here and there. But when discouragement seems to be what you experience on what should be an ordinary day. When, when, when nothing is really going wrong, but you still feel weighed down, you still feel discouraged, you still feel low. It means that discouragement is taking root in your life somehow. When you look around and you can't figure out why you are feeling low in spirit, but you are feeling low. When it's not that everything is going wrong, but some things are going right, but yet you still feel down in spirit. Where you are at a point in your life where you become cynical. You, you just get negative about everything and you're, you're, you're looking at life and you're just believing that nothing is going to work out. Things are not going to go well. Um, you, you become mentally drained and emotionally low. That's discouragement. That's discouragement. And, and what we are saying this evening is that discouragement can surround you like a stronghold. It can stop you from excelling in life. It can stop you from having good relationships. It can stop you from even having a good relationship with God because it gets in the way of your knowledge of the Lord. And so the Bible tells us in Psalm 3 that the psalmist declares this. 
in, in his time of discouragement. He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. All of us will need those head lifting moments from the Lord. Those times when we feel down and we want to go to the Lord and say, Lord, you are, you are my shield. Um, you are the lifter of my head. Um, when, when we acknowledge that in our times of discouragement, the one that we can look to is the Lord and he is the one who is the lifter of our heads. That's where we need to be. But when we are at a place where it seems as though discouragement is the norm, is the normal, is the everyday experience that we have, we need to address that discouragement, being daunted in spirit, feeling emotionally low, feeling downcast, overcome with feelings of sadness and hurt and pain. Your mind is always conjuring up images of defeat, of depression, you, you, you never seem to think of victory and anything that is exciting. You're, you're overwhelmed with negative emotions. That's what we're talking about when we talk about discouragement. Now, now, the Israelites were at a place in Babylon where they were discouraged. And, and I just want to lift this text for us in Psalm 137 verse 1 to 4. This is how we feel sometimes in our lives. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For they, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Discouragement is like a strange land for us. A place that we were not born to be. That's not the place where we are to be, at least not for an extended period of time. But you know, disappointment sometimes leads to frustration. Frustration leads to Discouragement. Discouragement can take us all the way to depression. To depression. And, and the enemy likes to have us discouraged. Because when we are discouraged, we are more receptive to negative thoughts. Stay with me today. When, when we are discouraged, we are more susceptible to negative thoughts. And then he is able to whisper negative things into our minds and we are somehow more ready to receive those negative things into our hearts. And so one of the strategies of the enemy um, to stop us from getting to know God better, to um, get in the way of our relationship with God and indeed our relationship with others is that he tries to get us down in spirit because when we are down in spirit, he can whisper his sweet nothings into our ears. So this word, um, there's a word delusionment. Which, which kind of perfectly describes how we set ourselves up sometimes for discouragement. We become disillusioned. When, when we have certain expectations of how we believe things, are supposed to work out. The, the trouble is that sometimes those expectations don't match reality. They don't work out as expected. And so our hopes are dashed. We lose courage. We lose hope. Things don't appear, the illusion, the way they ought to be. So we become discouraged. Discouragement is like the enemy of words like happiness and elation and joy, zeal, excitement, motivation. And so because the joy of the Lord is your strength, that's what the Bible says. 
it goes without saying then that discouragement will render us weak. If the joy of the Lord is our strength, then when we are discouraged, where there is no joy, we start to feel weak in spirit and weak emotionally. Listen, joy is that quality that allows you in the midst of trouble to live with hope, to understand that God is in this with me. And so I have the calm assurance that everything is going to be all right. Joy is that thing that allows you to smile in your storms with the belief that God is in control. Discouragement is the opposite of that. Because while joy will keep us strong, discouragement will render us weak. Because our outlook is going to be negative. It's going to be very negative. And the enemy will use that as an opportunity to try to keep us in that place because we don't feel as though we have the strength to move from that place. So I want to talk a little bit about the causes of discouragement. Let's talk about that for a little bit. What are some of the things that cause discouragement? One is self-pity. The attitude that makes you feel sorry for yourself. The attitude that causes you to see yourself as a victim. And, and so the slightest thing becomes taken personally and it makes you discouraged. You, you see every woman as being against you. You see persons as being better than you are. And so you live with this spirit of self-pity where you just feel sorry for yourself and it discourages you. In our last series, and if you were not part of that, I want to encourage you to go back and check out what we did when we talked about speak life. Sometimes the things that we say out loud but sometimes the self-talk, the inner self-talk that we engage in highlights a spirit of self-pity. Where we say things like, you know, nobody likes me. Nobody accepts me. I don't have any luck. Nobody notices me. I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. You see, this kind of disposition sets you up to be constantly discouraged. That negative self-talk, it sets you up to be discouraged. Don't say those things of yourself. Remember that your heavenly father made you. He, he fearfully and wonderfully made you. That's what Psalm 139 says. Um, he gave you the personality that you have. He gave you the gifts that you have. You look exactly the way your heavenly father designed you to look. Um, there is purpose in your life. Remember that. So don't go through life saying negative things to yourself over and over and over and living in that place of self-pity. I know that sometimes that, that spirit of self-pity comes because in one way or another, our emotions have been damaged and our self-esteem has been affected because of things that persons may have said to us or said over us that cause us to feel less than who we are. And, and we're going to talk about rebuking those things that people may have spoken over us, words that we never forgot, but were negative. And, and as a result, they caused us to live with this spirit of self-pity where we look down on ourselves and, and we keep saying negative things to ourselves. Another cause of discouragement is when we set a time limit on God. When the time runs out, we become disillusioned because it's not the reality that we are experiencing. The expectation that we had is not the reality. You know, um, sometimes you say, by this time, I must have this. And by this time, I must have experienced this. And, and by this time, I must go here. It's fine to set goals. 
But please understand that if you are God's child, that buying into the will and the mind of God becomes extremely important. It saves us from that kind of discouragement that comes from trying to live life on our own, by ourselves, setting our own agenda, and then expecting God to align himself with everything that we have for ourselves, rather than doing it this way, where we try to align ourselves with what God's plan and God's will is for our lives. It's as though we turn it around and we try to lead and say, Lord, just please follow me because I know where I'm going. And then we realize that we don't know, we don't get where we think we're going to get at the time we believe we're going to get there. Then we get upset with God. We get upset with God. Um, so, so it's important that we understand that there are times when God, um, and, and again, when we, when we did our advancement series, we talked a lot about detours. There are times that God takes us on a detour off the path that we believe we ought to be on because he wants to develop something in us. And, and he takes the time to develop those character traits in us. And then he gets us back on the path. And when he gets us back on the path, we are ready to proceed to um, the desired expectation. But there are some times when we really just need to grow up. We need to develop certain qualities and attitudes that will help us to be able to perform when we get to that place of destiny. And so he uses various um, avenues to help us to develop an excellent spirit. Now, we can become disillusioned if we think this is not where I ought to be. It's not where I ought to be at this point in time. I should be here or I should be there. I should be further. I should be doing X. I should be doing Y. Understand that if you walk with God, that God will lead you. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. If you are God's child, he will order your steps. And so there are times when he may take you off the path, but he's doing that because he wants to refine you so that he can get you back on the path and you can run toward the finish line. A good example of this was Joseph. Was Joseph. Now, now there were so many periods and episodes in his life where he should have been discouraged. But instead of being discouraged, the Bible presents him as using all those situations to develop in himself an excellent spirit. So when he was thrown in the pit by his brothers and taken out and sold to the Ishmaelites and then sold to Potiphar, he displayed an excellent spirit there. He didn't become disillusioned and he didn't become discouraged and depressed because there was something about him that impressed the ruler. He saw something in him that was remarkably different. He acknowledged him and he made him a leader even in his house. When he was sent to prison, the Bible says that he became a leader even in the prison. He didn't just get discouraged and um, depressed, disillusioned. And, and so it's important for us to understand that when we set a time limit on God, it can affect us because we can be thinking that, you know, Lord, you're not working on my behalf. When in fact, God really is working. He's working to develop you. So setting a time limit on God can be one of those things that causes discouragement. I also want to say that unmet expectations, and we've hinted at it right here, you know, um, can cause us to become discouraged when, when we have our expectations. But those expectations are not met. We can become discouraged. We, we feel that people should treat us the way we treat them. And when we, we don't get that reciprocation, we get discouraged. Why is it that I'm nice to everybody and nobody seems to want to be nice to me? You know, we, we seek to plan out our own lives and we believe that... Um, here is how things are going to turn out for me. And then God has a bigger and a better plan. But because we, we have our eyes set on what our plan is, rather than what his plan is, we can become discouraged. Then there are those unhealthy comparisons with others that can cause us to become discouraged. You know, you look around at people and people seem to be being blessed. 
And we don't seem to be getting the blessings that we believe we deserve. And I want to say to you that if you serve God, if you're God's child, whatever God's, God has for you, you will receive it. You, don't, don't worry. You, you may not receive it today or you may not receive it tomorrow. But whatever God has for you, trust me, you're going to receive it. And, and so, in the meantime, be grateful and be thankful for what God is doing in your life. Don't look at the brother. Don't look at the sister. Don't look at the sinner that you believe. Now, why is it that the ungodly seem to be prospering and, and the righteous seem to be going through tough times? Now, now, this is something that even the prophets in the Old Testament had to grapple with. Ask Amos. You know, um, as Habakkuk, they, they had to grapple with these things because they were seeing, I mean, the people who are not serving the Lord, why are they prospering like that? You know, and God had to address it in the life of the prophets. God had to speak to them. The important thing that, that they needed to know was that God is not bound to time like we are, but, but God in his right time does for us all the things that he needs to do for us. Yeah. Um, and so he gives to us everything that he needs to give us. And he, he walks with us and he supports us even in those times when things are not going the way we believe they ought to go. So don't look at others and how things are going for them and allow those things to, to cause you to become discouraged. Know that you serve a God who supports you and who walks with you. And understand Romans 8, 28, which says that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and those that are the called according to his purpose. So God is going to work with you. Sometimes we become discouraged when we can't have our own way. Now, all of us like to have our own way. We, we all wish that things would go our way. That's why we argue. That's why we argue. That's why we try to convince each other about our own ideas. We, we want our ideas used. We, we want our thoughts recognized. And so we, we get into arguments and, and we get into fights because we can't get our own way. We become very self-centered. And, and so when we, when we think of the book of Philippians, which talks about the attitude of Christ that all of us should, should aspire to. It talks about the selfless nature of Christ. And, and when we want to get our own way, when we become, um, you know, very internally focused and, and we just, you know, focus in on ourselves and what we want and not anybody else, that can cause us to become discouraged because it gets in the way of our relationships. We, we can't seem to get along with people and we become discouraged. And then the enemy uses that moment of discouragement to tell us, you know why um, they can't, you can't get along with him? He doesn't like you. And, and we begin to internalize that as well. And it starts this cycle. When simply because we can't get our own way, we, we then start conceptualizing why persons didn't take our idea. Why persons didn't listen to us. Why our, our idea was not used. Who's better than we are? Who is more liked? It begins a downward spiral of negative emotions that keeps us in a place of discouragement. Um, number six, negative viewpoints can cause us to be discouraged. You know, you, you can get to a place where you become so cynical that we see problems in every single thing. It seems as though our first response to everything is to look for the problem in it. Um, wrong ideas, the wrong people. It's too long, it's too short. We complain, we criticize. Um, we, we think that there is some hidden agenda, some hidden scheme. We, we make unnecessary assumptions. And this kind of negativity, trust me, can cause our existence to be very miserable. And guess what? As the saying goes, misery likes company. 
And so not only do you want to be miserable, but you want to draw other people into your misery. So, so when you now become an emissary, an agent of misery, because not only are you miserable, but you're trying to draw others in. You're trying to point out all the issues, all the mistakes. You're trying to draw people into your criticism and into your schemes. You are not only keeping yourself discouraged, but you're trying to spread this discouragement to others. You know when you're down in spirit, the person that we should talk to is the Lord. We shouldn't try to get people also to be down in spirit because we are down in spirit. And the only reason you should be talking to a brother or a sister is so that they can give you the encouragement or the help that you need. Not so that you can draw them to the place where you are. You, you have a negative outlook on something. Keep that to yourself and deal with it. Don't try to draw others into your sad situation. Understand that negative viewpoints will keep you discouraged. And then lastly, sometimes we're dealing with too many burdens. Too many burdens, too many things, you know, on our backs. And we are walking around with them and, and they keep us discouraged. Things like relationships that are not working out. Listen, if a relationship is not working out at all, you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it because if, if it's just a burden and you're not dealing with it, it's going to make you discouraged. You're going to walk around with, with thoughts in your mind all day long. You're going to worry about it. It's going to it's going to draw all the emotional energy out of you. It means that you need to address it. Don't stay there all the time and be dis, dis, um, discouraged and depressed. So you got to deal with it. Um, there are times when, you know, um, persons deceive us and we walk around with that deceit um, in our hearts. The, the, that feeling sometimes of abandonment and, um, you know, no, we just think about it all the time. Sometimes there's a spirit of unforgiveness that walks with us. And, oh man, we're going to talk about unforgiveness in terms of, a, a, of the stronghold of unforgiveness. We're going to talk about that later. But But sometimes, you know, um, we're just walking around and we, we are just mulling over in our minds. We are worrying about things. Um, there's debt and, and we are worrying about the debt. There, there is pressure that's on us and we are worrying about the pressure. Negative comments have been made about us and we are worrying about those negative comments. We've been disappointed because of something and we walk around with the disappointment. Too many burdens can cause us to be discouraged. It causes us to be discouraged. And I want to highlight a couple of things today about the consequences of this discouragement. We, we are gonna, we're going to come back next week and, and we are going to look at how we're going to attack discouragement. We, we're not going to have enough time to go into every detail as it relates to how we attack discouragement, but we're going to come back. So I, I want to encourage you to be here with us again next time as we, as we continue to look at the stronghold of discouragement. But in terms of the consequences, there, there is this kind of domino effect. Because discouragement spreads from one person to another. When we think of the domino effect, you, you know where we, we set the dominoes up and you just trigger the first one. Um, and because all the others are in line with it, one tips the other. And the other tips another. And then all the dominoes begin to fall down. Because it started with one. Discouragement is the kind of spirit that can destroy the morale of a group. You know, persons can be upbeat, excited about what they have to do. And some discouraged person can just come and, and begin to get everyone down in spirit because they just bring that negativity they bring what, what, what the young people call that, that negative vibe. And everybody just begins to get, um, you know, discouraged because it begins to spread. So that's the domino effect. And we are saying that we should not go around and try to make other people depressed because we are depressed. 
We shouldn't try to make everybody's outlook negative because our outlook is negative. What we need to do is that we need to deal with that negativity and try to ensure that we surrender it to God so that he can deal with it. So there is the domino effect. Then there is the defenselessness effect. Discouragement can make you vulnerable to satanic attacks. One of the things we sometimes do when we are discouraged is that we shut ourselves away. So that aloneness, that isolation gives the enemy his opportunity to crowd our minds with negative emotions. You know, if you, if you meet a group and they're not taking what you're saying, then, then you get discouraged and, and, and you, you go off to yourself. So, no, so, so you have these negative attitudes that you're bringing and, and persons don't want to embrace them. And so you don't want to be around those people anymore because see those people, they don't understand me. Um, and so I'm going to stay by myself because you're not listening to me. And, and so you get alone and the enemy likes that kind of isolation where it gets you by yourself, where, where you're not allowing people to speak into your life. And he begins then to tell you all kinds of negative things. You, you're not going to think of beating someone up when you're having a mountaintop day, are you? You don't think of the arguments that you can become involved in when you are having a mountaintop day. In fact, even when you're having ordinary days, you, you, don't just, you just don't want a conflict. You, you, you just want the peace. But when you're having your down days, your days of discouragement, where you embrace this discouragement and you go off by yourself and you allow the enemy to whisper negative things to you and you don't feel like praying, and you don't feel like reading the word. You don't feel like talking to other Christian brothers and sisters because they're not going to understand you. You don't feel like reading the word. You don't feel like fellowship and you just want to stay angry and upset. That's the defenselessness effect because what you're doing is that you are doing nothing that gets your defense against the enemy up. You are just buying into whatever he is trying to do to you you become defenseless and you stay right there in that pool of discouragement. And then thirdly, there is the what, what I call the diminishing effect. Where, where discouragement takes you from one level to another level, but not upward. It takes you downward, drying up your enthusiasm. Drying up your zeal and your joy. Drying up your happiness. Drying up your willingness to serve. Changing your disposition. So you see somebody one year and the person is ready to do everything. And then a year later, you see the person and the person has become so cynical. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to get involved in, in any kind of activity. They just want to be by themselves. And, and they have a negative outlook on everything. What has happened is that discouragement has overtaken them and it has changed their disposition. When you become discouraged, it stops you from giving your best to the God that created you. You become down and downcast and sad and, and, and feelings of lousiness. You don't want to become involved. I want to challenge you today that God did not create you to go through life discouraged. God did not create you to go through life discouraged and heavy hearted, hearted with burdens pressuring you. In fact, when Jesus came, he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, the, the Bible talks about casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Um, don't be anxious about anything but in, by prayer and supplication. Let all your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding should guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We need to understand that the word of God speaks to us about all these things that try to 
um, surround us and, and blight our lives and stop us from progressing. Discouragement is one of them. And in our next session, we are going to be talking about conquering discouragement. We're going to talk about singing. And, and this may be a little bit unorthodox for a Bible study. But we're going to talk about singing and how singing helped us to break the stronghold of discouragement. Um, we're going to talk about speaking to God. Remember we said in all of our sessions, we're going to be talking about laying these burdens, these, these strongholds at the feet of Jesus, where, where we pray to God. Um, where, where we talk, we're going to talk about the word and what the word of God has to say about discouragement and how we speak those words and surround our discouragement with those things that we are seeing in the word of God. We are going to surround our discouragement with what God says about encouragement. So we're going to do like the psalmist did and encourage ourselves in the Lord. And then we are also going to speak to our discouragement. There are things we are going to renounce and command to go in the name of Jesus. We are going to lift our heads up because we are children of God. Because God is a shield about us. He is our glory. And he is the lifter of our heads. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. That's part one of breaking the stronghold of discouragement. Next week, we're going to get into the meat of the matter where we look at our strategy for overcoming, for defeating the stronghold of discouragement in our lives. I want to encourage you today that if maybe right now in your life you are feeling discouraged, understand that the God that you serve did not create you for discouragement. He created you so that you would live a life of victory. But thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. You are my glory and the lifter of my heads. I just want to say a prayer for you, even as we wrap up our session today. And so even though you may be feeling discouraged, I know that the God that you serve is able to lift your spirit tonight and give you peace, give you hope, give you courage, give you strength, and give you victory in life. Let us pray. Father, thank you today for your word, and thank you for this opportunity that we have to sit around your word and study together. Thank you for reminding us that the weapons that we have, the strategies that we have, are not earthly but are heavenly. Thank you for reminding us that when, when, we, when we attack the things that attack us, we can do it in the power and the strength of Almighty God. Father, I pray for those persons who may be even discouraged right now, persons who've been having a long season of discouragement, who may be on the brink of depression, who are frustrated and may be on the brink of discouragement, who are going through a tough time and may be on the brink of frustration. Father, I pray that this domino effect will not begin um, in their lives that will cause them to go from one thing to another to another. Father, that they will not have that diminishing effect in their lives where their lives take a downward spiral. They will not get to a place of defenselessness where they feel as though there is no hope and, and they live in despair and just stay in that place, that season of discouragement and despondency. I pray, God, that you would lift someone's spirit tonight. I pray that you would direct someone to a word that encourages their heart. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you are a shield about us. You are our glory and you are the lifter of our heads. Lift our heads tonight. May we be encouraged. Give victory, give strength, give hope, give courage, God, even in this season. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for World Changers Bible Study. Breaking Strongholds. I look forward to seeing you next week where we wrap this up. We look at the second part of breaking the stronghold of discouragement. Be encouraged this week. God is on your side. God loves you. He is your maker. 
He designed you with purpose. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. The hairs of your head are numbered. God loves you with an everlasting love and his desire is toward you. Don't be discouraged. Know that God is on your side. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.